Hello, you're watching Encore coming to you from the Theatre Festival here in Avignon. Olivia Salazar is in Avignon. Welcome to Avignon. This city in the south of France was once known as the home of the papacy. Now a different kind of religious fervor takes over every year, the cult of dramatic arts. Avignon's Theatre Festival was created in 1947 and today it attracts hundreds of thousands of visitors. On the bill, an official programme of performances, readings and debates, as well as an eclectic offering of fringe events. This year, Africa is in the spotlight as the continent's brightest talents and most compelling stories take to the stage. To tell us more, we're joined by writer, performer and director Dorothy Munyaneza. Dorothy, thanks for joining us. Hi. Your show, Unwanted, is being staged here at Avignon, and I believe it's your first time at the festival. How does that feel? It's the first time as a director. Actually, I had come here in 2006 with François Verret in this piece called Sans Retour. And a few years later, 11 years later, I come back with my own piece, and it's actually quite an indescribable feeling of pride and humility at the same time being here, surrounded by so many wonderful artists. This show has a personal dimension too. I believe it's based on your experience in Rwanda, where you were born. Yes, and Wanted is a continuation of an autobiographical piece called Samedi Détente, which I created in 2014. So this time I come back to be the word carrier, let's say, to be la porte-parole uh, of these women's voices um, from my country who have been raped during the genocide of the Tutsi 94 and to speak about what they went through and their children as well. Now, yours is just one of the many African voices being represented this year at the festival across a wide variety of platforms. Malian singer Rukia Traore is presenting her version of a historical West African epic, while South African dancer Boise Sequana mixes dance, video and music in The Last King of Cagfontaine. Choreographer Serge Aimé Koulibaly takes Nigerian musician Fela Kuti as his inspiration for a piece with a political bent. And late author Leopold Sida Singer is honoured in the Palais des Papes with a performance of Femme Noire to close the festival. Yes. Dorothée, we can see there's great diversity in the work being presented this year. What do you think it says in terms of the image of uh, African contemporary performing arts today? Well, I believe that African contemporary art is actually a very rich and wide and phenomenal uh, scene, whether it's here in Europe, whether it's back on the continent, or whether it's on the American continent, African artists have been creating incredible work. And over the years, and now, it's actually a wonderful moment to see all of us gathered in such an, in such an event as the Festival d'Avignon, where we can show our work, where we can share our work. And indeed, artistic director Olivier P has long sought to bring world theatre to this world-class festival. We spoke to him a little more about the focus this year on sub-Saharan Africa. We believe that in Africa there are new voices that are very different from what we've heard in the past, far from that folkloric image some might have, and also far from what we do here in Europe. And what they have in common is that they're all politically conscious, politically active. These new artists, these African voices, they often work across dance, drama, spoken word, poetry in ways we've never seen before. And that comes together to create a new way of representing Africa. Olivier P there talks about the political dimension in many performances. Do you agree that politics is inevitable, that it's inseparable from art? There's a saying that Nina Simone once used, said, she said, how can you be an artist and not reflect the times? Um, so for me, being an artist, is being a reflection of our times, politically, socially, philosophically, and culturally. And I think, for me, it's an, it's, um, I feel like I cannot separate the political 
from the artistic. It's all linked because creating work that addresses uh, issues on women or children or rulers of our world is about creating work that is political and at the same time has can only be artistic because it's through the arts that we can address such issues for me, in my opinion. We certainly see that in the show, Unwanted. And we also see that your skills aren't limited to just dramatic performance. As a singer-songwriter, you contributed to the soundtrack of the 2004 film Hotel Rwanda. And your previous stage show, Samedi Détente, also sampled music mixed with dance. Yep. That performance revisits your childhood mm -hmm. before you left Rwanda yes. in 1994, the personal and political mix there. Can you tell us a little more about the very difficult subject matter in Unwanted? Well, rape is a taboo. Whether it's here in Europe, whether it's in Asia, in the Middle East, in Africa, rape is a taboo. It's a crime that is still silent. It's a crime that seeks to silence the victim. And so when one's been raped, the, especially in Rwanda, where, where I met these women, they told me that that which was difficult was being rejected by their family members because some of them have really been rejected and vi violated by their family members who would not accept that they were going to keep the, the babies of their perpetrators of the of the rapists and so they were doubly condemned because of the crime itself because of the genocide itself and also post this trauma of being alone and let's take a look at that performance of unwanted being staged here in avignon and see the kind of reception it's getting from the audience <laughs> Music was beautiful. The multilinguistic aspect to it, the set. Et surtout, il y a aussi un homme. Donc tout de suite, il y a il y a quelque chose qui me qui me touche. Very powerful, and that's a story worth telling. Trop violent. Moi, je trouvais que c'était juste. Hein. On a plutôt envie de se recueillir et puis de rester entre soi et soi-même. Dorothée, que vous montez et vous mettez ça votre nom en un sourire. Testimony about a, a different reality, which is also Our reality. Elle a transcendé quelque chose, quoi. Il a enlevé sa bague, sa chemise, son pistolet et m'a poussé dans les escaliers. Les Dorothée, revisiting these episodes, a very dark chapter of history, how was it in terms of your memory of this violence? Was it cathartic for you? Yes, I went to unearth certain uh, areas that were still very painful even 20 years on to create a moment where you or anybody else who's coming to see the show can listen to these names, can listen to my story, which is not just personal, it's also a world story. And how through my personal, my singular, I address the, the bigger picture. Um, so I knew that the pain was inevitable. But nobody put a gun on my head and said, you have to do this piece. It was a personal choice, right? And now it's how to use my personal history in order to create an artistic work. And it's not just about the Rwandan women. It's about what's happening to the Syrian women at the moment. It's what, what's happening to the women, Yazidi women. It's what's happening to Congolese women, Chadian women. It's in America, women are, women's bodies are constantly a battlefield and we need to talk about it. 
Well, we're moving to another multifaceted artist now and one whose skills range from mime to circus to dance and one who's being honoured in the off part of the festival or the fringe. Chocolat the Clown was the first black artist to find fame on the stage here in France at the end of the 19th century. A fascinating story that's inspired a book, a film and a performance. Bruno Lefort went to check it out. In the southern French city of Avignon, the streets are abuzz with music and dancing, with performers jostling for the attention of new audience members. Almost nothing is too left field. Actor Gora Diacate transforms into Raphael, better known by the stage name Chocolat. Raphael dit Chocolat, le clown Chocolat. L'homme qui a inventé la comédie clownesque, le duo de, de l'Auguste et du clown blanc, l'histoire du premier artiste noir de la scène française, comment enfant esclave parti de la Havane est devenu la coqueluche des nuits parisiennes de, de la belle époque. Chocolat revolutionized the art of clowning, together with his longtime partner Georges Foutit. This archive footage, shown at the World Expo in 1900, is used in the performance. Le combat de boxe, Foutit me cognait. Et moi, je lui répondais en pleurant. Euh, mais je suis chocolat Je suis chocolat Mais il cognait tellement fort le boucre que je tombais par terre inanimée. A source of inspiration, chocolat paved the way for many other comic entertainers that tasted success. Chocolat laid the foundations for Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, Harold Lloyd, all the big names who came after him. All of these comedy stars and burlesque entertainers owe him a lot. The author Gérard Noiriel told me that in real life, Charlie Chaplin saw a Chocolat performance and was inspired by him. So it wasn't by chance that in 2016, director Roche Dizem chose Chaplin's grandson, James Thierry, to star opposite French actor Omar Sy in the Chocolat biopic. It traces the origins of Chocolat and Foutit's famous double act, but with a little artistic license. When they met, each of them were already stars in their own right. The act was the sophisticated white man teaching the black man to be civilized. Both of them knew how to make people laugh. Both were stars of France's nouveau Cherche quelqu'un comme toi, quelqu'un pour renouveler mon numéro. Tu cherches un nègre? Cherche un clown pour m'assister. For the last five years, Diacate has been touring schools across France, sharing this homage to an artist who hasn't always received the recognition he deserves. A man who opened doors as one of the country's first ever black entertainers. Dorothée, as well as performing in the festival, I hope you'll get time to see some shows as a spectator as well. Is there anything on your must-see list? Oh, yes. Yes. Let me Bonifacio's piece called Standing in Time, where women dressed in black are singing in Maori, and it's amazing. I think this piece not only addresses women, addresses women's voices, uh, but it's also about contemplation and death and life and dignity. And this time that he creates on stage with these women is endless and it's wonderful. It's powerful, a powerful piece. And indeed, we'll leave you with a short clip of Standing in Time by Lenny Ponifestio. The Hotel Monianesa, thanks so much for joining us today. The Avignon Theatre Festival runs until the 26th of July and the off goes until the 30th. You can get all the details of that on our website as always. We'll catch you next time in Paris here on France 24.
I'm Sarah Morris and I'm France 24's correspondent in Madrid. I'll bring you the latest news on Spain and Portugal, two countries battling to leave behind years of austerity. Join me live and check out my reports on France 24 and France24.com. Sarah Morris, one of the 160 France 24 correspondents around the world. Reporters, presented by Mark Owen. The city of Raqqa in northern Syria has been held by the Islamic State group since early 2014. But Daesh Syrian headquarters is on the verge of liberation. Snipers still haunt the streets. The presence of large numbers of civilians is slowing the advance. France 24 reporters Maïssa Awad and James André join Kurdish and Arab fighters. One of the first TV crews to enter the city and film the ferocious fight for Raqqa's liberation, street by street. Reporters on France 24 and France24.com.